All right. So now that we have that, these holes should be the same size, right? We came to that conclusion. So if I click on one and I go up here and click edit part, if I click edit part and kind of see everything else turn transparent. And now I have this part. Of, so if I open it, now I've got its its features. So that's a 516th pencil. So I'm going to go with that size. So edit that. There's that. Now I'll edit this part. This one I had done 716ths. That was off by a little bit. So I'm just going to go in, edit the feature. Tell it to be. Five sixteenths. There's the part. Now they're the same size. So you can do that. You can edit it and then go ahead and make other changes to it <clears throat> and then save it. Uh, you're right back here. Save it. And now it's asking me do I want to save that tab file also? Because I've made changes to the tab file, but those are only in the assembly right now. I haven't really saved it onto that file. So I can say yes, and it'll save it back and update that file also. So now I've got that right. What did you just do? What? What did you just give the I just whole thing? clicked on it. it over again? Went to edit part. Okay. And then I could kind of expand that the part here on the tree. Okay. And I just edited the size of that those holes. So why would you not want to save your tab? It gives you the you choice. You would. You always want. I don't know why. It, it gives you the option. Maybe if you're experimenting with some changes, that's one of the good things. If you're just if you want to experiment with some changes, you can do it in the assembly and not have it go back and affect the main one. Um, so that's the only reason I could think. Uh, but usually you just say yes, I want to keep it, and you save it and say yes, update them. I've never said no. So I've got this now. So now I want to put in some screws. So there's lots of different ways I can put in screws and, and fasteners. Um, what we're going to do first is go to Office Products, and you want to turn on the SolidWorks toolbox. So it'll be off when you first start. So you just want to click that and turn it on. So now it actually added another add-in up here called Toolbox. So I want to go there, and I want to go Configure. And so I want to define user settings. So what this is telling me is that how do I want it to save my file when I create my parts? Do I want it to create a configuration on the main model that's stored in the program files directory? So if you're using just one computer and that's the only computer you use, or if you're running off of a server where you've got your library stored on the server, then yeah, that's a good way to do it because then everyone has access to that same thing. Um, I usually like to create new parts though. This what this does when you, when you insert a component, so you insert a screw or bolt or a nut or something, it'll make a new SOLIDWORKS file in your folder. But we have to tell it where that folder is right here. So you just have to update it for each project you're working on. You just have to click on this and tell it where to save it for this for right now. It'd be nice if it had, if it knew which folder you're working in and it would go there, but it doesn't. Um, so I'm just going to tell it that I want to go into that SOLIDWORKS assembly folder and say OK. And then I'm just going to X there and say yes. So now when I insert the files, it's going to save a copy into my folder. So now I'll just go over here to the bookcase, the design library, go to toolbox, ANSI inch, bolts and screws, machine screws. Say I wanted a panhead Phillips, so grab that, drag it in.
see if I can bring it in. If I get right on that hole, it's going to size it for that and stick it right on it too. So if you just want it in, you can just drag it in and set it somewhere. But if you put it on a hole, it's going to size it and pick the right size for that. And now you can just pick the green arrow and drag it out to whatever length I want. So you're going to inch and, inch and a quarter. Then okay. okay. buried in there too. So okay, I'm just going to go into that one, edit it. I don't know why it decided to flip the other way, but I just went in and edited the constraint to flip, flip around. That's why sometimes it's easier to put it off to the side and then to stretch to, and then make it yourself. Uh, when you do it automatically, sometimes they just kind of want to do their own thing. Um, so then I can go in, go back there, put in uh, nuts. I'm just going to place it wherever, and, size it. and then I'll tell it. No. In that style, they don't go that small, that's why. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. Do I need to pull up? Machine screw nuts. There we go. Hey, there it is. There we go. That worked that time. It's got washers and all kinds of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so you can put all right? kinds of stuff in. Lock washers and everything. And, and but my screws are, are spinning. Not for spinning. So I need to add some other constraints. So go back here, go to mate, and Can't make those do it that way. Can't do parallel. No, can't do parallel. Can't. No, I can do perpendicular. But because it's not really straight, sometimes it gives me a problem. So what I can do is when I want to make that, I can go back over here to my browser, come down to that part. the plane for that to line it up. Second one, it gets plane one, click that, and perpendicular. Fix that one. So I can use the planes 
and any any word planes that are in that part, I can use for assembly also, and use that to make things. So if like you had a sphere and you wanted to line it up somehow, you could use the, the, the planes to line it up. And on the back side, that's flat. So I can do those parallel. And then there I go. So that's one way. You can also go other places to get fasteners. Um, so like, I like McMaster. Anyone else? Anyone here using McMaster before? Yeah. You guys use McMaster ever? Mm -hmm. So McMaster has pretty much everything. <laughs> um, and they've got three yeah. models of a lot of things. We quarter stuff do it. Yeah. Not for yeah. <laughs> When I used to work at CIA, we'd have factories all over the state, and on our drawings, instead of just saying what size screw was, we'd also give the McMaster car part number, and so that way they could look up the part number and know exactly what we wanted, and then they could get it from wherever they wanted. So they can go to Fastenal or wherever to get it in bulk, cheap. Um, but because we had the McMaster spec, they knew that number, they could go just look that up and see everything we wanted on it. Finish, material, everything. And so our, our note on our, on our title block and bill of materials didn't need to be that big. It just needed to tell us what size it was. Because the part number told them all the other stuff. And so it's pretty easy to get through. So you pick a machine screw and oh, it's, 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 a, it's a cat jaw, huh? Oh. Yeah. You can copy it over to our hard drive? Yep. Or? I'm going to show you that right now. So if I'm going through, I'm picking what I want. So I want an inch. So I just go download and SolidWorks format. So I can just do download SolidWorks. SATs also work good for some programs. Um, if you're using like Inventor or something, then SATs work good. If for some reason the SOLIDWORKS one doesn't work, do an SAT. It'll come in good. Or an IGES. Uh, but usually that kind of SOLIDWORKS, then SAT, then IGES. So I'll just save that file. I'll save it. I'll open it. Open that folder. Wait for my computer that hates me. So all that's online. Yeah. You go get all that stuff. Yeah, and so they also have things for other than just screws. They've got all a lot of other components. Um, while I wait for that to update, um, they've got they've got models for most for most of their fasteners and and things, um, even some other components. Uh, KW Winco and Read Supply are other places that have good CAD libraries. Um, Read Supply has CAD for everything in their catalog, and most of most of the pictures on the website are CAD files. Um, so those are good places to go for other things, hinges and handles and all kinds of stuff. You can get them from them. Um, also, a lot of times suppliers will put CAD stuff on there, so. Like Southco, do you guys use any Southco stuff? Yeah. So you can go to their, their website and download three D models of all their parts. So that way you're not having to model it. Um, <clears throat> just kind of go everywhere. Also within SolidWorks. Or like, uh, side pump, yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna take that file, put it into my folder. But also within SolidWorks, if I come up here, I've got three D Content Central. And so I've got supplier content, accept it. And so you can go by category or by supplier. And so if I wanted uh, air 
air filters based on the company there's the air, air filters we want to use that filter factory I want that filter and now I you have to you have to register for the site and then you can you can log in, configure it, tell what size you want, and download the file. So for lo lots of machine components and things like that, you can get it from there. So they brought lots of different categories and lots of different suppliers um, that have put stuff in there. And then there, the SOLIDWORKS content is some, well, it's mostly learning stuff. Um, so, on these computers, you have educational curriculum that's included. I'm not sure if that comes in the professional versions or not. Um, some piping stuff. Also, up here in the design library, the guy features. So, retaining roofs, slots, keyways, cell patterns. So, if I open that part, I can go over the slot, grab this curve slot, and drop it right on, and now pick what size I want that to be. Uh, so, keyways. If I did a sheet metal, now I've got different punch sizes and stuff like that. Um, we've got a mold base stuff if you're doing molding, uh, embosses for sheet metal. So they've got louvers. So when we get to sheet metal we'll do some of those um, and that'll be next Friday. So they've got lots of stuff in this design library here also. So it's kind of, depending on what you're doing, you might be able to go to the design library to get stuff, you might be able to use the smart components here, you might be able to do, um, go to McMaster or Reed or JW and pull stuff, or go straight to Southco and pull it in, or whatever. So you kind of have to build your library of different websites to go to. Um, and I'm starting to do that here is I have a folder called reference that I've got different things just kind of organized supposed to get to. So distributors, got those, hardware, South Coast. Different places where we can get different things or information in one centralized spot. Um, so that's kind of the supporting side for to, to it. So that you're not trying to, trying to remember what's that website that has this? You can just go into your folder, pick pick where it is and go to it. Um, I also have other, so this is there if you want to browse through this stuff here. And just, you can copy that whole folder with all the shortcuts if you want it. It's just the references folder. Um, and I've got like design guides for plastics and molding and all kinds of stuff, materials. If you have any good resources like that, let me know. So I can add them to this list also. So if you know of any good places to get reference material or, or models, let me know. I can put them in here to share it all. Um, so I'll just finish that part. So questions on putting fasteners in? Going to component libraries. So I'll free you guys up. So you can put those 